Ancient Egypt has long fascinated and terrified us in the modern world. It is a spooky history filled with cat mummies and cursed tombs. So we've put together some of the more weird discoveries for your perusal. From a bunch of ancient trash to a mummy that wasn't a mummy at all, here are 20 amazing discoveries in Egypt that scare scientists. Number 20. Thule Papyrus Now, I'm just going to preface things by saying that I'm probably going to mispronounce a whole lot of things in this one, so you're just going to have to get over it right away. Now, we've really pulled out all the stops with this one. Straight out of the gate, we have for you aliens. This discovery in Egypt scares scientists. Yes, this is the mysterious Thule papyrus, which some people believe to be proof of alien existence as recorded by the ancient Egyptians. It's said to depict the sighting of a huge UFO during the reign of Thutmosis III around 1480 BC. The thing is, however, that this papyrus was allegedly discovered by some bloke named Thule who found it in an antique shop. He was the director of all things ancient and Egyptian in the Vatican Museum in the 1930s, so you would imagine he might know about such stuff. Anyways, it seems as though Thule figured that the papyrus was too expensive, so rather than buying it like you would expect, he simply made a copy of the original. Then, after that, he made another copy, but this time he would replace the original Hariatic script with hieroglyphs, and therein lies the problem. If it weren't already pretty difficult to believe in a papyrus that depicted a UFO of all things, it turns out that said papyrus wasn't even the original anyway, and it had been translated as well. But of course, if you do want to believe, then this papyrus can offer you a degree of evidence that's unlike anything else that's out there. It's considered to be the oldest known recording of a sighting of a fleet of flying saucers. So what do you think about all this business? Totally legit? or a teeny bit shady. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 19, King Tut's Tomb. No doubt you've probably heard of the treasure of ancient Egyptian pharaoh Tutankhamun, but in case you haven't and you've been living under a rock, here's a little bit of information for your pleasure. This is the story about why stealing stuff from tombs is probably a bad idea. You know, what with all the curses and such. One of the most famously cursed ancient treasures of all time was the tomb of Tutankhamun. Discovered on the 4th of November 1922 by a team of archaeologists who were led by a man named Howard Carter, the long lost tomb of the ancient Egyptian pharaoh had been left undisturbed for almost 3,000 years. When the tomb was entered and opened by Carter and his team, rumors began circulating that the curse of the pharaoh would befall all who disturbed the boy king's resting place, and they did. A whole load of people involved in the unearthing of the tomb, the removal of all the golden treasures, and the bodies and other tomb-based delights, well, they all began dropping like flies. Sudden or violent deaths were dispensed amongst the people who took part or profited from the discovery of the tomb, so I don't know about you, but I think poking about in dead people's stuff like this is probably not the best idea, even if their stuff is really shiny. Number 18. Rosetta Stone the discovery of the Rosetta Stone was one of the greatest breakthroughs in archaeology and history. The Rosetta Stone is a decree that dates back to 196 BC, which was written by a council of priests affirming the right of the pharaoh, Ptolemy V, to rule over Egypt. It sounds kind of boring, but the thing was that the stone has the same decree written on it in three different languages. And back in 1799, when it would be discovered by a scientific team alongside a military expedition that was led by Napoleon, the only language that was known was that of ancient Greek. But the stone also had hieroglyphic and demotic translations of the same texts, which allowed scholars to decipher these lost languages by using the stone itself. 
Later on, the British would go and steal the Rosetta Stone and bunged it up into a British museum, and the Egyptians have repeatedly requested that it be returned to Egypt, but it apparently never has. Number 17. Oxyrhynchus Papyra now, if you were to go poking around in ancient rubbish dumps back in the late 19th century, it seems as though you were still pretty likely to turn up something more exciting than a load of old broken pots. In fact, a couple of nosy old archaeology doers named Bernard Pyron Grenfell and Arthur Surridge Hunt were rummaging around in one such vintage trash pile near Oxyrhynchus in Egypt, and back then they came across a whole bunch of manuscripts. There are estimated to be millions of documents, some of which are just tiny fragments, and although they've been in the process of transcription and conservation since 1898, there are still millions that are left to be examined. Rummaging in the rubbish dump proved to be fairly fruitful then. These manuscripts date back from the 3rd century BC and the Roman era of Egyptian history, which was from 32 BC to the Muslim Muslim conquests of 640 AD. As exciting as all the piles of papyrus may seem, the section of writings were mostly various kinds of public and private documents. You know, like ancient tax returns and inventories, as well as some private letters, a few bits of literary work, and a whole heap of codes, edicts, and official correspondence. The stuff of everyday life. Just really, really old. And perhaps these sort of items are most valuable in offering historians a real look at life in ancient Egypt, more than the inscriptions on tombs, where people are generally painted in their best light. These kinds of papers show how people lived and the boring minutia of daily life, and even the ancient Egyptians seemed to be into bureaucracy as well. Number 16. Pyramid Town at Giza in 1988, a team of archaeologists would discover a town near the site of the Pyramid of Minkur on the Giza Plateau in Egypt. Since its discovery, they've been excavating the whole entire area and revealing all kinds of things that are incredibly interesting, to archaeology nerds anyway. Stuff as fascinating as how the people who lived in Giza might have existed and therefore worked on the building of the pyramid. There have been many revelations as those archaeologists have laboriously scraped raped and brushed away layers of sand and earth from the centuries past, they've discovered such thrilling things as barracks for soldiers, houses that were for senior officials, as well as the port, which would have been the place to receive goods into town. The general consensus? Well, it's that this can reveal a lot of exciting stuff about how people lived back then and how they may have managed to construct the pyramid. That kind of undertaking really takes a lot of logistics, you know. Obviously, if you're a fan of ancient Egypt, then all of this information is likely to be a massive thrill fest. But otherwise, well, yeah, it's just an old load of foundations of a town from a few thousand years ago. Number 15. Tomb KV-5 when the tomb, known as KV-5 in the Valley of the Kings, would be opened in 1995, apparently nobody knew just how significant it would turn out to be. It appears that this particular tomb was there that they buried the sons of Pharaoh Ramses II, and is believed that at least six of these royal sons were interned in the place, but there's also evidence in the depictions and writings on the walls that there may have initially been as many as 20 of his sons placed here after death. The tomb itself has loads of chambers and corridors, and it's now believed to be the largest ever constructed in the Valley of the Kings, with 121 corridors and chambers. They actually believe that more than 150 will eventually be discovered. Although it took them a long time to figure out, archaeologists now believe that this is one of the most significant finds in the Valley of the Kings, and has yet to reveal everything that it conceals about Egypt's ancient past. Number 14. The Silver King Back in 1939, an archaeologist by the name of Pierre Montet excavated the tomb of a pharaoh who ruled Egypt about 3,000 years ago. This pharaoh went by the fairly unpronounceable name of the I, so he was swiftly given a different moniker by the discovery team. As he would be found to have been buried in a silver coffin, he was simply named the Silver King. Stands to reason, right? 
The Silver King's burial chamber was in the city of Tanis in the Nile Delta. He was buried in a coffin that was, as we know, made of silver, and he was sporting a super fancy golden burial mask. The tomb would also be filled with a lot of other gubbins, in the style of other pharaoh's tombs, all the stuff that they would need for a jolly old time in the afterlife. Unfortunately, the area is much more humid than other places in Egypt, so much of the ancient ephemera was a little worse for wear. But being thousands of years old, well, that's kind of to be expected, I would imagine. Number 13. Pyramid Age Papyra Back in 2013, an Egyptologist by the name of Pierre Talet and his trusty team would find the oldest papyrus that was ever discovered. So that's all rather exciting, isn't it? This particular papyrus is an especially thrilling logbook by a chap known as Inspector Marer, whose job was to transport limestone from a nearby quarry, and although this sounds a teeny bit on the boring side, it's actually an extremely revealing peep into the process of the building of the Great Pyramid of Khufu. The limestone being accounted for was then transported to the construction site and was used as cladding on the pyramid itself. So it's no small wonder that these archaeologists got their panties in a bunch and proclaimed the discovery to be the find of the 21st century when that century had barely even begun. Somewhat presumptuous, one might say. Number 12. Statues of Sekhmet During the reign of the pharaoh Amenhotep III, Hundreds of massive statues of the goddess Sekhmet were carved and put onto display. In fact, it's thought that there were at least 730 of these statues, but what exactly was the pharaoh's fixation with this particular goddess? Sekhmet was the lion-headed goddess of ancient Egypt with whom you may be familiar. She's depicted both seated and standing and often holds a papyrus-shaped scepter. Apparently, she's a fierce mother goddess of the Old Kingdom, also known as the Powerful One, and she is the eye of the sun and the violent protector of the creator god. She carried an ankh in her hand and was known to be a giver of life and fertility throughout the annual flooding of the Nile River. So, kind of a big deal back in ancient Egypt, really. And perhaps this is why Amenhotep III was so eager to please this goddess in particular. Some archaeologists have suggested that creating so many statues of the goddess was an attempt to appease her fearsome aspects and attract her more beneficial features. But who can say? Perhaps this pharaoh just really liked ladies with lion heads. Or maybe he was dissatisfied with all of the statues and kept having more made, all in search of the best one. For now, nobody really knows. Number 11. Khufu's Secret Room the Great Pyramid of Giza, which is also known as Khufu's Pyramid, is a symbol of the great and enduring mysterious appeal of Egypt's ancient past. This pyramid is one of the biggest and most obvious pieces of the puzzle, and yet it continues to harbor secrets, some of which are still being revealed today. It's recently been discovered that within the Great Pyramid of Giza, there lies a massive void, or hidden room if you will, and scientists have only just begun to develop the technology that allows them to actually see beneath the surface of this structure. Although Khufu's pyramid would be built in 2500 BC, our modern technology has only allowed us to probe so far inside of the edifice. There are now scanners in use that are able to visualize and map out the actual shapes of the interior, rather than just basing the map on what people had seen or could imagine was likely to be inside. So, one of the things that they found while scanning the pyramid with this fancy new machine was a room, or perhaps a chamber, that seemed to have been deliberately concealed. At 100 feet long, the space seems as though it may have had a purpose, but even with all the scanning machines in the world, nobody can yet figure out the meaning of the ancient ideas. Scientists who are involved in the discovery are not calling the space a room as such, mostly because they have no idea what it was for, so they've mostly taken to calling the area a void. There are some theories, many of which these scientists are hesitant to get too excited about, one of which is that this hidden room could be the place where the king's body was buried. However, they say it was more likely to have served an engineering purpose for the architects who were involved in the construction of the Great Pyramid. What do you believe? Should they try and find a way to go ahead and take a closer look? Or perhaps there's a curse lurking deep beneath? Number 10. 
Serapum of Saqqara The ancient Egyptian religion known as Apis worshipped cattle as sacred, and there have been plenty of archaeological finds to confirm the significance of these animals during that period. The largest of these examples is the ancient Egyptian burial place for sacred bulls, which is in Memphis, not the Memphis that Elvis is from, the town in Egypt. The Serapum of Saqqara is the holy bull burial ground. The Epis people believe that bulls were incarnations of the god named Ptah. This is the patron god of craftsmen and architects. In this place, there are believed to be at least 60 Apis buried, placed there during a period that spans about 1400 years. There are individual tombs from the earliest period, and then later on, the mummification of the sacred bulls meant that they were placed in sarcophagi. The whole thing was taken very seriously indeed, and there are also stone tablets with dedications, as well as catacombs for the mother cows. Nowadays, it's possible to visit this load of very old bull as a tourist in Egypt. Certainly makes for a change from all the mummified humans, I would suppose. Number 9. Unknown Electromagnetic Energy And now for something completely different. Well, kind of. It is still about pyramids and whatnot, but also weird science stuff instead of dead things. One of the biggest mysteries of ancient Egypt is no doubt that of the pyramids, so for some reason, a group of scientists would decide that they would apply methods of theoretical physics in order to test the electromagnetic response of the Great Pyramid to radio waves. As one does, obviously. Anyways, what they predicted was that the pyramid would be able to concentrate electromagnetic energy under the base and in its internal chambers. This apparently does a thing that has something to do with nanoparticles, but hey, I just work here and physics is not really my specialty, so you'll have to forgive me. But if you do happen to understand all of that science lingo or even care to figure out how this thing works, then go ahead and let me know all about it in the comments down below. Or of course, you can just call me an idiot for not having the foggiest idea of what it all means. That would be the traditional internet-y response after all. Number 8. Meteorite Jewelry Everyone loves a good shiny thing, even ancient people from thousands of years ago. In fact, even though they didn't necessarily have all the stuff to make metal things, they still wanted to drape their bodies in some sparkly stuff, so they used what was available at the time, and in this instance, it happened to be meteorites. If lovely, glittery things keep falling from the sky, the obvious thing to do with them is to fashion them into some sort of spangly brooch or dangle them from your earlobes. I mean, why the heck not? Not. Yes, according to some archaeological investigations, ancient Egyptian jewels from 5,000-year-old tomb would turn out to have been from meteorites. These beads represent the first known use of iron in ancient Egypt, and this is just what happened to be thousands of years before the Iron Age. So researchers figured that these were likely as not space rocks rather than human-made adornments. But as it's always the case in archaeology, some people do disagree. There's a school of thought that believes that these could be the first efforts at smelting in ancient Egyptian society. Who can say? But the science people do go back and forth about such things all the time. What's a few thousand years between friends, really? Number 7. Dendera Light the Dendera Light is the name that's given to images carved into the walls of the Hathor Temple, which is located within the Dander Temple complex in the town of Dandara in Egypt. There are three stones across which the relief carving is depicted. So far, so regular, you may say, but there's something also distinctly hinky about the picture. That's right, the Dendera Light is so-called because it appears to depict an electrical light bulb, although it could just as easily be an enormous eggplant, but that's besides the point. Just squint a little bit and tell me what you see. Plenty of people do enjoy a good solid conspiracy theory to get their teeth into, and the idea that the ancient Egyptians were somehow messing about with light bulbs, well, that's just too exciting. They say that this looks exactly like a crook's tube with an electric cord through the middle. There's a figure holding the light bulb aloft above the other figures and illuminating the area. Well, of course it is. It sets off all kinds of conspiracy theorists and even some of the more level-headed science nerds. There are plenty of madcap notions that ancient civilizations actually had all kinds of advanced technologies, but for some reason, we simply haven't seen all the evidence of this. They probably even had TikTok and Snapchat too. 
Number 6. Gods on Earth The ancient Egyptians did have a very strong sense of what the afterlife was and how it would all go down. There was a general belief that the afterlife was where one lived for eternity in the places that one had enjoyed in life, but it was necessary to pass through a set of trials from Osiris, the god of the underworld. This involved weighing the dead person's heart against the feather of truth, which does sound rather gruesome, but it explains all that fixation on removing the organs and mummifying the body, I do suppose. Anyways, the journey to the underworld involved a lot of rather complex things and confessions, as well as all that weight and measure business, and it's no doubt why the gods themselves played such a significant role in life before death for the ancient Egyptians. The enjoyment of life was not in any way diminished by the promise of the afterlife. In fact, for the ancient Egyptian people, the funerary rites and all the tributes that represented the journey to the underworld were simply an extension of life on Earth into the afterlife. Much like as final than it may appear from our contemporary perspective. Number 5. Building the Pyramids Back in 2010, some new tombs would be discovered in Giza in Egypt that gave many Egyptologists reason to believe that the pyramids may not have actually been built by slaves. A chief archaeologist would make a statement to the effect that the newly uncovered tombs were those of the workers that were responsible for building the pyramids themselves. He reckoned that if they were slaves, and therefore without status, they would not have been permitted to have been buried beside the king's tomb. It does stand to reason, but is this the evidence that's really going to undo everything we've always understood about the pyramids? Probably not. Although the first of these workers' tombs were actually discovered in 1990, when a horse literally tripped over them, this theory had taken 20 years to be developed. During that time, everyone had continued to watch all the movies that depicted slaves building the pyramids. All the textbooks carried on being filled with images and descriptions of this as a fact as well. And let's be honest, almost all of the stuff that we think we understand from ancient times is actually based on the interpretation of different experts with the information that's available to them in that moment. It'll take years of continuing research and additional evidence to change the narrative around the building of the pyramids, but it's not going to happen because one guy says it out loud to a few news reporters, even if he does think it's the most exciting and important discovery of all time. And he would though, now wouldn't he? But what do you think? Is this a shocking discovery or just some new theory. Number 4. Golden City the remains of an ancient city lost for almost 3,000 years is nothing to be sniffed at, and the city was golden, so it must have been a good one. Now, everyone is always really quick to call any kind of find in Egypt the biggest discovery since Tutankhamun's tomb, found an old pair of pharaoh pants, the biggest discovery since Tutankhamun, dug up a mummy with a funny hat, oh, that's the biggest discovery since old King Tut. You know the drill. But on this occasion, those who were bragging about it all, well, Maybe they did have a point. In September of 2020, excavations would begin on a site between the temples of Amenhotep III and Ramses III near Luxor, about 300 miles south of Cairo. It took a few weeks, but the archaeology team began to uncover brick buildings that seemed to go in every direction. Now, here's the thing. What they were finding turned out to be the largest ancient city that was ever uncovered in Egypt. It had been in existence throughout the era of Amenhotep III and Tutankhamun himself. It would eventually be lost under the sands of the desert, but this city represents the golden age of the pharaohs, and there have been numerous important finds within the site. From jewelry to colorful pottery items, mud bricks with the seal of Amenhotep III pressed into them, and scarab beetle amulets. After seven months of excavation on the site, it included several different neighborhoods and even a bakery with all of its pots and ovens still in place. As the excavation continues, the city does continue to give up its secrets and show everyone just how life might have been over 2,000 years ago. Number 3. 4,000-Year-Old Mummy Discovery 
In 2021, in the city of Aswan in Egypt, archaeologists would make a discovery of a 4,000-year-old tomb that had remained untouched and hidden inside of a cliffside. This remarkable discovery included a coffin that had been saved from looters and was about to offer up a surprising, if even basically really gross, discovery. The body that was inside of the terracotta coffin was kind of hideous, spooky enough to scare even the hardened mummy-bothering Egyptologists who were poking about inside. They said it was a very ugly mummy. Well, <laughs> if you'd been dead for 4,000 years, you might not look so hot either, to be fair. Anyways, it actually turned out that the body had not been mummified, but had been wrapped in black cloth, hence the extra spooky aspect of the corpse. But what surprised everyone the most, perhaps, was the fact that this 4,000-year-old dead body appeared to have been that of an old woman, and they estimated her age, at death, to have been about 70 years old. Why is that so weird? Well, people just didn't live that long back then, apparently. There were millions of ways to die, and almost all of them condemned humans in that era to a much earlier grave. They reckon that the average life expectancy at the time was actually about 25 years old. So what happened here? Well, if you have any ideas, go ahead and share them down below. Number 2. Preserved 4,000-Year-Old Tomb in Egypt now, if you've ever learned about ancient Egypt at school, one of the first things you're going to have encountered is that of the weird and distinctly graphic process of mummification, which the ancient Egyptians were so very fond of. Many a school child has the whole technique, especially the bit with the brains, you know, tattooed into their memory for all time. So this is an archaeological site that can probably add some extra stuff to the wonderful imaginings of your own brain. Ew. This ancient mummification workshop would be discovered in Saqqara near the ancient necropolis of the pyramids south of Cairo. Within the workshop itself, they had uncovered a collection of embalming gear, along with pottery vessels, bowls, and measuring cups. These findings were giving historians an opportunity to find out more about the oils that were used in the mummification process, and they were especially interested to learn about the chemical composition of the materials that were used, as this was one of the best preserved sites that had been discovered where this actually took place. Alongside the workshop, there are also additional burial chambers, which contain mummies that have remained untouched, and therefore unloved ever since they were laid to rest. Again, more potential secrets are yet to be revealed. Number 1. Khufu Ship the Khufu ship is a fully intact vessel from ancient Egypt that was discovered sealed up in a pit at the base of the Great Pyramid of Giza. You know, Khufu's Pyramid, hence the name of this old boat. It really is a remarkable thing as well. buried in the manner that was typical at the time as an object for use by the deceased in the afterlife, this vessel has been immaculately preserved and has offered great insights into the seafaring traditions of the ancient people. The ship is 142 feet long and 19 feet wide and is considered to be an absolute masterpiece of wooden craftsmanship. In fact, it's not only highly revered, but also believed to be the oldest intact ship on earth. Well, what a fun one. Were you scared by any of these discoveries in ancient Egypt? Or all those easily spooked scientists are just being wimps? As always, let me know all your fabulous thoughts in the comments down below. Be sure to check out all the other cool stuff that's showing up on the screen, and I'll see you next time.